Number five of this is how do we as parents and teachers respond when we see bullying take place? How do we handle that ourselves when a child comes home or reports to a teacher that they're being bullied? Um, I can't just fly off the handle. Oh my gosh, bully, I just heard a whole lecture about bullying. Is it because of road death? You can kill, no, 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 no. First of all, is your kid the type that's kind of very sensitive and could easily perceive himself as being bullied when really he just got pushed because they were in the middle of a soccer game or football or basketball and it happened to be that he got pushed by the same kid uh, twice or three times in the game and, and um, could perceive that as being bullied um, only to find out later on that the kid's actually on the same team. Um, but, but you know, there's so many ways that this could be misconstrued as bullying when it really isn't. Um, and the parent, the teacher has to have some tools in their toolbox, which we're going to get to later on in the presentation, of how do you as the teacher or the parent respond to kids who are making the claim that so-and-so is bullying me? Or if you actually see it yourself, we've got to figure out, okay, so what are, the, what are the protocol? If there is one, how do we go through that protocol to establish the best way to solve the bullying when it's taking place? in the recess, in the playground, or even in the classroom. These are really important points because the Torah is so marked on a, the din of a right and so marked on bullying, so marked on, on name calling, putting down, moitzi shemra, lashon hara, rechilus. There's so many mitzvahs, oinus tvarim, inulim lalim. There's so many mitzvahs, averas, that are related to treating other people so that they don't feel put down. Uh, a Ger Tzedek has dozens of times in the Torah tells us don't oppress them, not in mon money, not with words. And there are separate Averas just for a Ger. We have to be so careful. It's so clear the Torah takes bullying super seriously and is not interested in, in it escalating to a point where it now has to be dealt with at the symptom stage of shooting or suicides because of cyberspace where young ladies, boys, are actually committing suicide in the from community because of the intimidation and constant isolation they sense in their social world. They can't see a future for themselves getting married and raising a family and they're so oppressed by the thoughts they're having that get triggered by the bullying. The Torah is not interested in it reaching such a point. It wants us to root it out real soon, right at the root. We're going to talk about where the root really is, it's in my thinking, but the Torah is extremely marked to defend and advocate the person who is a target when it really is real. Um, and we have to be sensitive to that. It doesn't mean we're going to beat up every bully. No, there's, there's, there's a lot to be said on that. We're going to talk about that too. Okay, so number six of this is whose side is the media on? Now, you could argue that your children and your school and in their homes, they're not affected by the media. And that may be accurate, for now, it may still remain accurate into the future. It may not be a totally realistic either because the barriers are down. Whether we like it or not, the fact of the matter is that the power of the media on every level, whether it's newspapers, magazines, whether it's the news on the radio, in the car, or whether it's mum, dad scrolling down uh, the Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, meals at home in front of the kids or on the sofa or in shul, Rahman al the kids are seeing that we have access to the media. And if they're not getting it directly, it's being absorbed by many, many children. What's the position of the media on bullying? And if you look a little bit closer beneath the surface, it's not even beneath the surface. It is glaringly obvious that for the most part, the media celebrates, put down, destruction of character, Motsi Shemra. You will never come up find a single day where there isn't a whole scroll of litigations, accusations, politicians bad-mouthing each other. 
celebrities badmouthing politicians. It's constant put down, put down, put down. Hey, you could have a government official who's having a family event in a restaurant who's being thrown out because of their political affiliation. I mean, bullying. And it's legitimized. It, and it, and even, even the, the left Democrats will justify completely blinded from recognizing that what's taking place is not democracy. That's not freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is a fundamentally flawed concept because I'm not free to hurt you with words. If I have a legitimate claim against you and I can't sort it out between us personally, I have a right to go to Bastin and for them, the judges, to clarify who is right and who's been wronged and what the compensation should look like. But to go straight to the media, to put down people in public, to make assumptions, oh, this Haredi refused to get out of his seat. And that's why the plane was delayed. That's posted on how many websites until eventually it gets to national news. And only a week later, El Al admits, and so do eyewitnesses who were passengers on the plane, say that the plane was delayed an hour before this gentleman refused to sit next to a member of the opposite gender, and that the delay he caused was not more than maybe one or two minutes. Because the real delay was for the fact that the plane wasn't able to take off for another hour. And that was already on the placard as the passengers were embarking on the plane itself. And El Al themselves admitted to that. And this is a week after, a week after this news of a from Jew refusing to sit next to Anisha has been propagated on Jewish websites and then hits the national news and creates a massive Chil Hashem out of nothing more than words, misrepresentation of reality. That's a form of bullying and it's celebrated. When I say celebrated, we glorify it. In the media, it's glorified. And this becomes a serious problem. And I haven't started scratching the surface. Movies glorify bullying, violence. What is violence? It's the worst type of bullying. I could have good guys against the bad guys, but that's not every single plot. There's plenty of bullying that is socially acceptable in the media in the form of enter. Really? Yeah. Comedies are very often about putting down other people and we laugh glorifying one person being the target of the unkind words of another. And it's called comedy. It's called entertainment. It becomes glorified and then it becomes part of our social culture and it becomes not only accepted, it becomes legitimized and then glorified and celebrated. See, we're, we're in a society where the media is constantly corrupting definitions and brilliantly doing so in such a subtle and overt way as well that it clouds our clarity on such simple issues as bullying. Victims of bullying and all the bystanders and we're not paying attention that that's what's taking place consistently throughout the media, whether it's magazines, whether it's television. Oh my gosh, television. Television? You've got these talent shows where Simon Cowell is glorified for humiliating contestants in public in front of not thousands, millions of viewers. It's archived. You can watch it again and again and again. People walk off stage in tears. People who have a, a genuine talent, sincerely trying to, in many cases, build for the first time 
a self-esteem that they haven't experienced till now in a talent that was not measured in school because they didn't do music in school or dance or singing. Uh, school was always measured by academic exams, grades, marks. And here, hey, Britain has talent. Um, um, you, America has talent. And on these various talent shows, um, they can be put down in public and with, with very unkind comments and insults and they walk off stage deeply humiliated. And that is not taken down, it's put up and it's archived, and millions and millions and millions of people around the world get to watch it. It's so much part of our culture. The media is on the side of the bully. Harassment, I don't even want to say the words, but harassment in the media, oh my gosh, you've got thousands it's probably an exaggeration, it's probably millions of employers who take advantage of their female employees to have favours done for them if they want to keep their job, if they want to get a promotion, if they want to get that part in the casting of that movie. And now they're starting to come forward, the bullied targets, victims are coming forward and saying, me too, I was also abused. And it's this person, this person, this person, you start, and it's almost literally every day. We have a society that has not just allowed it, we've sanctioned, legitimized, to a point where anyone who's vulnerable, an Isha, has been taken advantage of. And it's glorified in the media, and it's put in the faces, and it's too much. Because the more we're exposed to what's going on, what happens to our sensibility? Do we become more sensitive to not be like that? Or the more we hear about these things, see it, the more we expect from the lowering of the moral standard of society, we expect it to happen. And we're less and less outraged, less and less outraged. All 85% of us doesn't bother us, immune, because it's happening everywhere. So you've got the whole world of the media, which is very powerful, movies, television, even commercials, celebrities, you've got sports players who uh, will badmouth the manager, the manager will badmouth, they're badmouthing each other all over, and you'll see bullying in the middle of a game in front of 100,000 fans because the team in the World Cup is losing or it's a tie and there's only minutes to go or they've got one goal ahead and in order to maintain that position um, they're fouling back and forth, left and right, with no conscious, no conscience whatsoever about what's right and what's wrong. It's a form of bullying and it's legitimised in the world of sports, it's legitimized in the financial world, it's legitimized in the entertainment world, it's legitimized across the board, the business world. And before you know it, it's close to impossible for our children not to know. Even if they can't articulate, but the power of the media is way on the side of the bully. And meantime, we are outraged by school shootings, Okay, we should be. But look at the bigger picture, the whole of society has fallen into the trap of celebrating the bully against the target. We make such a big deal out of it that there's no real mystery behind the target picking up a gun and killing their boyfriend, killing their friends in school, killing their girlfriend, killing their husband. Or so angry they decide that even if it means taking their life with the ex and, and their biological kids and drive off a cliff, they'll do it because it's gone so far. It's one form of bullying after the other, oppression. I'll be stronger than you and it's almost like the mid of a Malik where he'll jump into the bath even though he's going to get burnt but he'll make it cooler for everyone else and what ends up happening is the standards of moral society is getting lower and lower and our expectations are lowered and lowered so we're less and less outraged. So the Torah wants us
to pay attention to what the Torah tells us so that when we look at the physical world around us, we can identify where it's taking place, even if it's subtle, or in this case it's actually very overt, but we're so used to seeing it around us and hearing it on the news all the time that we become completely oblivious to how outrageous it is that half the population of the world, Nashim, are undressed in magazines, tax-free, in every single pocket, on every single passenger seat, and we're not outraged that the whole advertising world has taken half the population of the human race and present them as pieces of meat? That's bullying. People are not bodies. They're personalities. Some of these people have fallen into the trap of believing that. And please forgive me, be very careful who you play this to. There are people who are called porn stars. Stars? Isn't this person humiliated to call themselves that this is what they do for a living? And, and our label for them is a star? You could be joking. What is going on? This is what our children are exposed to, and if they're not, their parents are. And fool yourselves not. It might not be your six and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven year old. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. You gotta be kidding. You think they don't know? The whole world is almost in alignment with the bully, although officially they'll take the position of let's support and save the victim. And that's why you can have a situation where people who could be even terrorists can be allowed into another country and get all the rights of that country and then go ahead and kill, maim, rape, devastate families, destroy people's lives. And it's all twisted because we're, we're, we're protecting the bully in the name of protecting the innocent and the victims. It's all upside down. Olam hafuch. So this is not about presenting the negativity about the media. This is more of an observation. It's a reality check on helping us realize what the territory really looks like for a child and realize what we're up. We don't have to fight that. We don't have to fight that. We just have to have clarity so we know what we're looking for so we can articulate to our children what, what's going on if their eyes do see, if their ears do hear. We can help them understand from a Torah perspective the corruption and the twisting of definitions in freedom of speech. That's not freedom of speech. I'm not free to hurt you with my words. That's Lashon Hara. I'm not free to hurt you with my words. That's Oynas Dvarim. I'm not free to put you down or call you a nickname. I'm not free to be a Roidef with my mouth. Roid pair. No, I don't have that freedom. I have to protect you with my mouth. I have to be done like Hafschus on you if I do see or hear something you did wrong. We have mitzvahs that I have to incorporate, including loy titar, espenei amecha. I'm not allowed to think about the things you've said or did wrong to me. I have to control my thoughts. We're going to get to that soon. But the Torah is not, it's not about not being free thinking. It's, not, it's all about not being a slave to the media, not being a slave to other people's thinking, not be a, a, a blind slave to the trends in society which are popular. Because more often than not, it's all fake reality. It's not MS. And if it's not MS, it's Sheker. And that's where we need to get our definition super clear. What is the definition of a Roidef? So that we can see it with our eyes. Clearly. So still in number six, the power of the media, what we're exposed to in the news. Road rage. Road rage is bullying. There's no other way to explain it. It's just a manifestation, but it's still bullying. Oh my gosh, you, you have people pulling out guns out of rage um, uh, uh, because they don't like the customer service. It's, it's gone beyond. You have manslaughter because of anger, bullying. Losing a fight, getting back at revenge. We have talent shows we've mentioned and the American Idol. It's all about putting down. 
a contestant who's doing their best, not trying to be inferior. TV commercials are becoming more and more violent. Children are exposed to that. Violent video games. You know, so if, even if you want to argue your kids are not exposed to any of that, well, the teenagers, it's, really, it's going to be really hard to argue that none of them see any or are playing any of the video games which have violence. It's in the name of competition or getting points, but it's about violence. It's about bullying, where the bottom line is the bully gets power over the target, the victim. So I'm not saying that all this medium is going to turn a child from an innocent child into a bully. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that the message across the board is very clear. Bully wins. Bully gets popular. Bully has power. Comedians who are putting down others with sarcasm. And it's funny. And therefore, the message is... If you get other people to laugh at someone else's expense, despite the fact that you put someone else down, but you've got others to laugh and it makes you popular, you get admiration, you're the winner. Power to the bully. That's what, that's what the kids are hearing. And it bec it's becoming the culture that's surrounding us. And if it leaks in, it seeps in, whichever medium it seeps through, it's a problem. But we're gonna see even with all that, there's a very elegant and simple solution, which we're, we talked about in, in number nine, bu building block number nine, and it spills over very much into, into the bullying part of, of recess, number 10. Uh, so we're going to look at that soon. It's going to come up. Hold on tight. Number seven in how to bully-proof our child on the subject of bullying under building block number 10, recess. Number seven, there are four types of bullying. Most bullying is broken down into these four categories. Number one, you've got physical bullying. It's probably the easiest to identify. Number two, you've got verbal bullying, which really is identical to emotional bullying. That's where most of people who feel emotionally put down, it's through the verbal. Uh, it can be physical, obviously, as well, but it's mostly through the uh, verbal. We're gonna look at that. Number three is social bullying. That really refers to socially isolating a child, student, cliques, um, groups will turn against a particular kid and exclude him from a game, from the bunk uh, in, in camp, to exclude a child from playing soccer, football, basketball. Um, any type of social exclusion is much worse for the girls. We're going to look at that briefly as well. And then the fourth, which is very recent, recent in terms of basically less than a decade. We're in the year 2018 as, as, as we're filming this. Uh, it's less than a decade that we had flip phones uh, that you could, the most you could do is text on them. Uh, but today with, with iPhones and smartphones, um, the whole world of the media is, is barely 10 years old, barely 10 years old. So it's extremely recent that cyberbullying has become a reality that's very, very serious. And it's extremely hard to control. So we're going to look at that briefly as well. So let's look at number one, physical bullying. That's the easiest one to identify because physical bullying is punching, kicking, pushing. It can be during recess, especially in, the, in a game where a kid will foul deliberately in order to get the ball or stop the other kid from controlling the ball. Uh, these are things that you and I have to, as parents and as teachers, Murrahs and, and Rebaim, we have to be really clear in our minds that it's a no-no. Uh, any type of bullying is an absolute no-no. And the more we are sensitized to this, but in a very healthy way, not in like, uh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I had no idea how serious bullying is. Oh my gosh, this is, I've got to be, I can't believe I'm not paying attention. Then I get really filled with anxiety and fear that, oh, my child's scarred for life and I haven't even been it. Don't go there. Your child has fantastic resilience, which we're going to talk about very soon. Uh, but in the meantime, this is, this is about landscaping the territory. Let's get a clear map and understand what we're looking at. Bullying is big. Yes, it is, but it's not something to get fearful and filled with anxiety. Yes, the media is on the side of bullies. Uh, yes, 
uh, bullying is, is taking place globally and in the cyber world, it's really scary. Yes, there are suicides. Yes, it had spilled into our communities, Rahman al Islam. But uh, we're here not to get stuck in the negative because it's not real. The good in life is real. Hashem is real. Ava Satera, Ava Mitzvah is real. Olam um, HaZeh is Sheker. It's Olam HaSheker. It's Olam HaDimyan. It's not a real world. It's, it's mostly an illusion. Now, that is an exaggeration. It's not really mostly. It's completely. But uh, for most of us, most of the time, it's, it seems real. But it's actually really an illusion. So our, our Chazal are the ones who are real in describing reality. So the reality is, we have Selim Elohim in us, and we're going to see how that's manifest in understanding how that helps me be strong in the face of being bullied. We're going to talk about it. But right now, let's just get the landscape. Yeah, physical bullying, that includes tripping up, hair pulling, uh, shoving someone into another person, pushing during waiting online to go to recess or waiting online for lunch, waiting online, getting on the bus, getting on the bus and pushing and shoving. All, all that, I'm not saying is only always bullying, but it's going in that direction. Hands off. Your space is not my space. It's your space. And if I need to go close to you, I have to indicate. Yeah. If I'm on a bicycle, I indicate. If I'm in a car, I will push up the lever or down to indicate and I'm wanting to go to the left or to the right, so people know what I'm doing. Courtesy. It's respecting people's space. It's no different in our physical interaction in the classroom, in going from a classroom to recess, during recess. We have our physical boundaries and space. And it's important to understand that the minute I really enter your space, that's potential for friction, conflict, possibly bullying. So. Physical bullying, I think, is, is, is very easy to recognize. The one part about physical bullying that's not so obvious, somewhat subtle, is body language. It's still physical, but it's body language. Um, that's put-downs. Uh, looking down on someone. Someone uh, putting down another person with their facial expression. It's very easy to hurt another person's feelings that way, and that's a form of bullying. Uh, the teacher didn't hear it, maybe not saw it either, but that's still under the category of body language being used to maintain, I'm better than you, I'm stronger than you, I'm smarter than you, I'm superior to you. All of that falls into the same category. There's a lot of spillover, there's gaiva, uh, there can be kinna, there's a sinner, there's some serious spillover into other averas that come out of bullying. So you're not going to see the words, don't bully, thou shalt not bully, in those words in the Torah, but it's all over the place once we understand and identify what is a roidef, what is a nirdef, oh, what are you allowed to do to a roidef, and oh, what, what's going on here, al tamud al damrecha, don't stand by the blood of your brother, al toet ben amecha, don't, Bear a grudge, don't think and remember, says Rashi Natira, is lost in Shmira. Don't remember, guard, don't guard the negative memories in your mind about what people said and did to you. Because you're just bullying yourself. We're going to get to that. That's a big one. We're going to get to that. It's very important. Uh, recognizing how much I bully myself with those memories and how I can actually put myself down so that I am actually my own bully and my own target. I'm really good for nothing. You know, I'm so academically poor. You know, I'll, I can never, I'll never be a Tom I'll never, You know, this is not for me. I, don't, I just I haven't got the brains. I don't know. I, I, I have no sit flesh. And I've been told a hundred times I'm not a Muslim. I'm just a Nazlan. I'm just lazy. And I, I'm, I'm a slob. I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm out of control. I've got my addictions and I can never be, take control of myself. And before you know it, Guess who's bullying who? I don't need you to bully me because my mind is replaying all the negative comments that's actually bullying me and I'm now both the bully and the target. Oh my gosh, go figure that out. 
So that's something to become slightly aware of, because uh, I could do that. I could really do that, and successfully, and without paying attention. That here we are trying to figure out who's a bully and who's not a bully in my life, and then when I turn the mirror this way, oh, it's me. I'm the bully, and I'm the target. And perhaps worst of all, I'm the bystander. Because if I stand there listening to my put-downs, to me, against me, over me, and I don't come to my own defense, so I, I've done the full cycle. I, I am standing in the shoes of all three. The bully, the victim, and the bystander. And boy, could I make a mess of me if I don't stop that cycle and recognize that's not who I want to be. I don't want to be a bully to me, and I don't want to feel victimized by my own thoughts. And the minute I start recognizing it's thought that I'm allowing from memories of mistakes I've made or things people have said, and I start believing, yeah, they're right, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm not as smart as, I'm slow, here's the proof, look at my grades, look at my exam score, look at my report card, and I start putting myself down academically, socially, I'm so inept, I don't have friends, I keep losing all the friends, I try to make it so desperate, I know everyone like runs away from me. And before I know it, I'm my own bully, I'm my own victim, and I'm standing by in the sense that I'm not doing what I should do, which is go to the next thought and reveal that I can control myself by not letting those thoughts kill me, hurt me, put me down, insult me. So we're gonna, we're gonna touch that, but right now that's physical bullying, and we just touched on how my body language can also be a form of bullying, and then we went into how I can be my own bully. Number two of this, we're still in number seven, is verbal and emotional bullying. That's the most common, name calling, verbal insults, put downs, comparisons, why can't you be like so and so, uh, look how good he is or she is, how, uh, how well groomed, how, how disciplined they are, how they get their homework done, just that's also a form of put down. I might think I'm trying to motivate in a very negative way, but ultimately it's a, it's a form of put down and put down is bullying. I'm, I'm maintaining an imbalance of power because I know better and you're less than me. And it, that's not encouraging, it's discouraging, it's, it's putting down the kid. And even though the kid may feel inferior and can't do much about it, but just wait till 16, 17 and they get their spurt of growth and now they're six foot three. Hmm. See how well you do if you get into an argument and he gets really angry. <laughs> You're looking up five, six, seven inches uh, at his eyes. Don't. Uh, that's not a reason to not bully. It may be an additional bonus reason, but uh, these kids are going to remember for a long time how this particular kid in the class was against them and hurt them, and the teacher did, or the teacher themselves put them down. Mm -mm. I think the worst case that the bully should be concerned for, but really concerned for, is that whoever he targeted in elementary and high school, he better be sure that one day he's not in hospital and the only person in the world who can save his life is the brain surgeon who is the kid he bullied in school. You don't want to be there. Don't go there. Alti baz lechol adam. Don't ever put anybody down. And al tafli maflik, don't show disdain for any dava thing. She'ein lecha adam, she'ein leisha. There's no such thing as a person whose hour is going to be a victory. And you better be sure you're on the right side of him. You do not want to be under the knife if you were a bully and he's now your brain surgeon or surgeon and there's nobody else who can do what he can do. Bad news! So, Aldi Baz Lechol Adam. The word Baz, I think in Hebrew, is the original source for abuse because A and Aleph are, are silent letters. 
Alti Basel Chol Adam, don't abuse anybody. She'en Lech Adam, she'en Lo Shah, you never know when you're going to need that person or a close relative, and then that person sabotages your getting the help you need, the loan you need, the surgery you need, the doctor you need, the attorney you need. It's not worth it. You never know, because what comes around, comes around no matter what. I have to be careful what I put out. It's going to come back. It will come back. HaKadosh Baruch in his sense of humor, it's not worth it, ever. But th th those are just like bonus. That's not the reason not to be a bully. It's just bonus. So in the verbal, emotional bullying, you've got name calling, schneid comments, insults about physical features. Not a good idea. Any words that hurt. Tone of voice, that's massive. Tone of voice. You make me sick. He doesn't even have to shout. You make me sick. It's just a put down. And you don't have to read about Draco Malfoy to appreciate that uh, it can be body language, it can be choice of words, and it can be tone of voice, it can be facial expressions. There's so many ways I can put you down with my body, my voice, choice of words, tone of voice. And that's before we get to the big ones. Lash and Hara, oh my gosh. Rechilas, Motsi Shemra, Oynas Dvarim, Inuim Lalim, exaggerations, Sheker. Exaggeration is a subcategory of Sheker that can lead to forms of bullying. All these are part of verbal bullying. 